Tonight, can Google's new Chromebook Pixel compete with the MacBook? Netflix gets hacked in a good way. And now you can type only in emojis. What are you waiting for? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 292 for Wednesday, March 11th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you can see and manage all of your financial accounts in one place and make smarter investments. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Welcome back to Tech News Tonight. I am glad you're here. I'm Megan Maroney, and joining me tonight to talk about some of the news of the day is Owen Williams from the Next Web. Welcome, Owen. Hey. So you're all the way from New Zealand. You're yep, from... other side of the world. <laughs> well, <laughs> In we... the future, too. <laughs> Excellent. How did you survive the great iTunes outage of Odd15? Oh, it was it was depressing. I was actually trying to download an app to review it, and I was like, it's not working, and they're like, it's not working, and I was, yeah, I basically had to give up. It was it was horrible. And yeah. people were asking me, like, hey, you should know that iTunes is down. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> We, I always think it's my fault first. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so you wrote a story this morning about the new online Google store that's designed to showcase and sell some of the best new hardware made with Google software, including the newest Chromebook Pixel, which went on sale today. Let's talk about the new store first, then we'll talk about the new Pixel. What's interesting about this store? I think it's, I think it's the first time they've kind of built something where, you know, you know how Apple has all those splash pages and you're like, they, with all the all the juicy details, I suppose, about the new products. Like, here's the iPhone, and it does this, this, and this. They never they never had, I guess, that for Google before. This is, you know, this is one place where you can go and you can get your Nest, you can get your Chromebook, you can get a tablet, anything you want, basically. Uh, and they kind of show off all the all the nice things about it now. So it's, it's quite, a, quite a better way than before, which was basically just a listing on the Play Store about, you know, here's the thing, here's how much it costs, so you can buy it. So it's nice to see them all have one home and have different products from different parts of the company on there now. Right. Well, do you think the launch of the store or the relaunch of the store and the Pixel tells us something about where Google might be headed in terms of I hardware? Think, yeah, I think I think they are getting pretty serious about actually being in the hardware game, which is which is pretty cool. Kind of before it was kind of, you know, they work with other partners, so it was kind of at arm's length, if anything. Um, so it's cool to see them get serious about it. What's confusing is they have both stores still at the moment, which means I guess it's fine because you'll know where to go. Like you can just buy one from either store, but it's a bit weird that they'd have both. I, su I suspect they'll kill the other one eventually. Right. There's a section in the Google Play Store just where you can yeah. buy hardware. Yeah. Right. So there's also a brick and mortar store that they announced today in London. Yeah. You know anything in London, about that? which is amazing. <laughs> I really want to visit it. Um, they it, it looked really cool. It was basically just a showcase of cool things they've been working on. Um, they said that they're coming to a few different places around the world. So, uh, you know, you'll be able to try the different Chromebooks or the Nexus phone. There's a couple of like giant wall interactive things there, which is really cool. I just hope that they, you know, bring it to more places because I, I want to have a go. <laughs> right. Well, let's move on to the Chromebook Pixel. Uh, it's, it was brand new, announced today. Um, it's $1,000. Why would I buy it? It's so nice. No, uh, that's that's what I'm not sure about. Like the the first Chromebook Pixel didn't didn't do particularly well. I mean, it's a it's a lovely laptop. It's it's a great idea. You know, they've built this premium laptop that shows off the the Chromebook thing. But then again, it's a thousand dollars for a browser. <laughs> uh, you know, all you can do on that is surf the web. It, it does have a long battery life. Uh, you know, and it's it's a fairly nice laptop, but. I guess I guess they're targeting it at students and these productivity people as opposed to everybody else. But what I don't understand is why you wouldn't just buy the five hundred dollar model if you were a student. You probably you probably don't really care that much. So it's it's a really interesting uh, proposition. I think it looks gorgeous though. It's just why would you spend a thousand dollars on this when you could buy a MacBook Air for you know a, a little bit more? You right. might you might as well just buy the MacBook. <laughs> yeah, and when you say students, I presume you mean college students. Yeah, yeah, um, college students, I know, university. I have, I have kids who are 9 and 11, and, and they have yeah. Chromebooks at school that um, they yeah. destroy within the year. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you wouldn't want to give one of those kids a uh, $1,000 Chromebook. No. Uh, so how do you think the Pixel compares to the new MacBook that they announced on Monday? 
Yeah, it's it's interesting because the the new Chromebook is uh, cheaper but has better specs. So people are going to say like, oh, but you should just buy the Chromebook. But I, I actually wrote something yesterday about how I think the new MacBook is awesome because it's so light, it's so thin, like it's ridiculous. Yes, that it only has one port, but actually most people aren't plugging in much stuff at all anyway. Uh, I, you know, having when I was at university, I think I had to lug a huge Toshiba thing around that weighed like a ton of bricks. Something like the MacBook, the, the MacBook that they announced, uh, you know, is nice and light and portable. So I don't know if the Pixel, if it, you know, you can spend $200 more and get, or 299 more and get the MacBook or you can get the Pixel. It's a hard sell, but with, with Google at schools, you know, at the, in the, the high school kind of younger ages now, it might actually make more sense for those kids coming up through those age groups into college to get a Chromebook because that's what they're used to. And I suspect that's what Google's strategy is here. Right. You know, you, get, you come off these cheap, cheap things and then you go to college and you're like, hey, I'll buy a Chromebook Pixel. Why not? I'm, I'm used to that thing. So it could work. Absolutely. Right. Well, every, uh, did you have one of the first ones, the first Chromebook Pixel? I had, I, I remember the, uh, I actually had the original, original Chromebook. I didn't have, I tried the original Pixel. It was all right. Uh, <laughs> well, everyone I that do, I, I know that, that everyone I know that has one was given one at yeah. Google I/O. So I don't yeah. actually know anyone exactly. who's purchased one. Themselves. Basically, all the all the tech people have one that they got given and they use it around the house. <laughs> right. So you also have an article in the Next Web about this year's Netflix Hack Day. Tell us a little bit about what that is. These guys do so much cool stuff. It's awesome. Like every, I swear, every six months they're bringing out some feature that's like some imaginary thing and they're like, oh yeah, you know, we might not incorporate this, but some of the stuff they showed off this year was was really cool. They had the uh, the NES uh, hack so you could watch it on the old school game console, uh, House of Cards, I think it was. How did they do, um, how did they do that? I, I don't even know. It must be transcoded onto there. Uh, <laughs> I hope they do like a big post explaining how that was done or like get it working on like a Sega as well. And, you know, all these different consoles would be really cool. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite one was absolutely the, um, the, the subtitle rewind. So you can, you can rewind your show by just the subtitle. So you can just click back and it goes back, back by different phrases. So you can quickly find like, oh, I missed that line. Oh, let's quickly go back a couple of, you know, a couple of bits in the conversation to that, to that part, which is really awesome. And then... The one, uh, the Netflix adultery was amazing. You can stop your housemates or partner or whatever from watching your show without you, basically, by securing it with two pins. So you have to have, like, you know, like nuclear launch codes. You got to have, like, both pins to, to be able to watch the thing. And I think that's, that's awesome because everybody's cheated at watching a TV show at least once with, without their partner. <laughs> I, I, I don't, that has, doesn't happen at, at my house, but because, um, you know, then you have to just watch it again, right? I mean, you can't. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But some people do it. They can't resist. <laughs> right. So just so you know more than your partner, I get that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So was there a hack to make this season of House of Cards less boring? <laughs> Unfortunately not. Unless, unless you think watching it on an NES is better, but... Alas, no. <laughs> Are you a House of Cards fan? I watched. I watched a little bit, but it was a bit, a bit American politicy for me. Right. I, I should, you know, maybe it's educational. Maybe I should get into it. Everybody keeps telling me I do, but I've been binging Homeland lately, so no time. <laughs> well, I also highly recommend the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I don't know if you've had a chance to watch that. It might be too I, American too. I, I'll, I'll write it down right now and I'll watch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, finally, you've been raving on Twitter and on the next web about an emoji keyboard. Now, uh, I like emojis probably more than the average person. Yep. Uh, but why would I want this? What does it do? <laughs> At first, I was like, hey, hey, this thing is like ridiculous. Like, OK, it's an emoji keyboard. You know, you can get those, those stupid silicon keyboard cover things, right? Like I seen a few of them around. They're disgusting. And then I and then I realized this thing actually works. Like you put it on your keyboard, you install a piece of software, and basically they turn the useless useless caps lock button into a emoji button. And you can just like slam the emoji button and just type. Um, <laughs> and the the one the one thing I think is really interesting about that is like I reckon eventually if this got really popular, they would use it to uh, you could use it to type out your name in emoji or 
anything like that. It's it's cool that it's actually usable and only costs twenty five dollars. Like there's no there's no reason not to have this thing. In essence, like I just I just need five. <laughs> It is way cheaper than the Apple Watch, so there's that. Exactly, exactly. You could buy like 200 of these. So, Owen, do you? What are you working on next? Is can you tell us what you're working on oh, now? Oh, uh, I can't. That's okay. Everyone <laughs> says that. Cool I probably should ask yeah. a different question at this point. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm looking forward to trying the Apple Watch. I think I think in the next in the next couple of weeks they'll uh, be passing those out, and it'll be cool to kind of get my hands on it and actually try it, and hopefully not get robbed when I go in public. <laughs> well, thank you, Owen. Owen Williams is a writer at The Next Web. He has one of the best Twitter handles around. It's at Ow, <laughs> or probably you pronounce it at O, but I, yep. I say Ow whenever I read it. It's, it's Ow. It's, I get called that in real life now. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Owen. Thank you. Coming up, Uber wants you if you're a lady and you won't believe how far one man has gone for an Apple Watch. But first... As a smart investor, you should have a diversified portfolio. But like so many investors, you may have accounts scattered all over the place. Personal Capital lets you track all your investments on one screen. Plus, their award-winning software works on your desktop, your smartphone, and your tablet. You also need to grow your wealth. And Personal Capital will help you make smarter financial decisions. Get a free investment checkup with a customized financial plan, plan so you can make smart decisions. Then take the next step with Personal Capital's Wealth Management Services. This type of advice was once only available to the super rich. Now, thanks to Personal Capital, you can get one-on-one -on -one access to your own personal financial advisor, starting with a free 30-minute consultation. It's your money, so keep more of it. Signing up only takes a minute. It's free, and you will see the benefits immediately. To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Personal Capital is free, and it's the smart way to grow your money. We thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Here's an update to the story we reported yesterday about Hillary Clinton's use of a personal email account. In a press conference yesterday, Clinton said her server was secure and I don't know when we will all learn never to say that. Today, Forbes reports that Clinton's server was unencrypted for three months. Security researchers claim that the email account could easily have been compromised or even spoofed and used to spread malware. They're not saying that it was compromised, just that it could have been. Please remove that nail from that coffin. I tried to put Google Glass in last month. 9to5Google is reporting that Google Glass posted several job postings for engineers on LinkedIn this week. This goes along with rumors we've been hearing that Google Glass is alive and well in the enterprise. Yesterday, Uber pledged to add 1 million female drivers worldwide by 2020. This will be an ambitious task, especially in the United States, where Fortune.com points out that only 12.7% of all cab drivers are female. Uber has claims they have 14% female drivers. Uber was clear in their announcement that there will be no way to request a female driver from the app. If you are female and you'd like to be driven somewhere by a woman and you live in New York City, you can try the service She Rides. It launched last fall. And finally, if you're still on the fence about buying an Apple Watch, you could just try one and then test out Apple's return policy, or you could rent one the legal way. Mashable reports today that an enterprising startup called Lumoid will offer Apple Watch rentals for the Sport Edition starting at $45. $25 of that will go towards your purchase if you decide to keep it. The rental for the steel version will cost $50 to $5, and $30 of that will go towards your purchase. Lumoid says they already have a wait list on the Apple Watch, but they also rent all kinds of wearables, photo and video gear, and quadcopters. Are you getting tired of crazy stories about the Apple Watch yet? If so, please email me, let me know, at Megan at twit.tv, or you can tweet at me at Megan Maroney. If you would like a moratorium on Apple Watch stories, I will consider it. Otherwise, I will keep telling you about the amazing and ridiculous lengths people will go to to get their hands on an Apple Watch. According to Market Watch, a 21-year-old man was arrested on drug dealing charges in China yesterday. The local man said that the local police said the man is claiming that he was dealing drugs in order to make enough money to buy the fanciest Apple Watch due to go on sale in China on April 24th. Just say no to selling drugs to buy an Apple Watch. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching.
Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.